Hey guys! I know you've been waiting a hell of a long time for this tutorial, but now, finally... Hey wait, we need dramatic music! Cue dramatic music! That's much better! Now, I've had a number of requests from you guys for this tutorial, so today we will finally look at how to create flying 3D bullets, strange floating objects, UFOs, dissolving people into crows, and any other effect that you can possibly imagine. Today we will cover 3D integration. Now, since 3D integration is a more advanced topic, I will break this tutorial up into a number of parts. Today I will talk about the theory of 3D integration, all the steps that are involved and what you need at each of those steps. 3D integration, as the name suggests, is a technique where real-life footage is composited with virtual objects that were created, animated and rendered inside a 3D program. There are a number of things that make creating realistic looking 3D integration effects difficult. One, you need to know a 3D program like 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D or Maya and you need to be pretty good at it. Plus you need to have the time. When I created the Turn to Crows effect it took me about two weeks of iteratively rendering in 3D Studio Max and making adjustments until I was actually happy with the final effect. Two, you need to match the exact same lighting, environment and camera movement from your real life footage in your 3D program, otherwise the two pieces won't fit together in the end. And three, you need to spend time compositing your real life footage with your rendered footage. This may involve cleaning up some things or adding stock footage elements to blend those two things nicely together and create a realistic looking result. Here's an overview from start to finish of all the steps involved in creating a 3D integration effect. Step one, the shoot. Like any other scene you film where you want to add visual effects to in the end, you have to film your scene with the effect in mind. That means your actors may have to interact with objects that don't yet exist, or you may have to create splatter or impact effects for an alien creature you want to add to the scene later. Also, you have to be mindful of light, shadows and reflections, as any virtual objects you add to the scene have to interact naturally within that environment, otherwise it just won't look realistic. Step 2. 3D Camera Tracking once you've filmed your live footage, you need to track it to create data that describes the position and the movement of your camera throughout the shot. This data is then used to create a virtual camera that matches the movement and positioning of your real camera. This ensures that whatever elements you render in your 3D scene will match on top of your real life footage and can be composited properly. Note that camera tracking is a lot easier if you're having a lockdown shot where the camera sits fixed on a tripod. 3. Creating a virtual 3D scene once you've tracked your camera, it is time to bring all of that data into your 3D program, set up a 3D scene and a virtual camera that imitates your real life camera. You can then create and animate any virtual objects in your 3D scene and render it out. Now, because we want to composite the rendered scene with the real life footage, you may have to know a lot more about your 3D program than just to hit the render button. You may require additional passes for beauty, shadow, ambient, diffuse, reflections, z-depth, and any other layers that help you realistically compositing those two pieces back together in the end. Step 4. Compositing. The last step is to bring all of your render layers back into After Effects and composite them on top of your real life footage. This may require additional masking, some cleanups and making sure that all of the pieces fit together nicely. You may also use a method called Z-depth compositing to add additional stock footage elements on top of your render layers and blend it all together nicely into a final realistic looking effect. Now, does it sound complicated? A little bit. However, it is not unmanageable and in this tutorial mini-series I will show you exactly what you need to do at each of those steps. For this, we will use the turn to cross effect from our recent video as well as a new UFO scene which includes a moving camera. I will also quickly cover one of my favorite plugins for Adobe After Effects called Element 3D from Video Copilot which allows you to create a virtual scene and 3D objects directly inside of Adobe After Effects. Well, while rather limited compared to a fully fledged 3D program, in certain situations it can save you a whole lot of time, plus it's just fun to use. I really hope you enjoyed this small introduction to 3D integration and as always please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. I will put up the next part of this tutorial mini-series soon, so please subscribe if you want to see more or come and stalk me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.